Last year, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources started distributing a climate change activity guide to middle schools and high schools around the state. The goal of the project is to give teachers and through teachers, the students, basic information that they can use to explore and the topic of climate change, obviously it's in the news a lot, kids are hearing a lot about it, everybody's hearing a lot about it, so they can explore it, decide for themselves what they believe about it, and then apply it to their life. But Representative Jim Ott says the book tries to guide students towards one specific conclusion. It's a very one-sided view of climate change. Um, the, the booklet is written on the premise that global warming is happening and that humans are responsible for it and that therefore we ought to do something about it. So it, it's, uh, how shall I say, a, a real piece of uh, policy uh, is, is what they're really pushing. Ott points to the activity guide itself for proof. For example, on uh, page 46, we have the exercise on ecosystem, ecosystem relationships. Students will, and one of the things that the students will do here is understand how global warming will result in changes to Wisconsin's climate and weather patterns. So they're going to understand how, not if global warming will result, but how global warming will result. The guide's author, Mary Hamill, disagrees. Now does, uh, does the guide take like a position one way or the other? No, not really. It talks about, the. it starts at the beginning with talking about what's weather versus climate. It does go into s sources, but it really takes it again from an exploratory standpoint. So how would you define pollution? What would make something a pollutant? Let's talk about the greenhouse gases. You mentioned greenhouse. Where do they come from? Hamill argues the guide is strictly about science. It really doesn't deal with the politics of it at all, the laws, the any of that. Okay. Um, and even, you know, if you think about the actions you might recommend, their energy efficiency actions, which is a good idea no matter how you believe. Ott again points to the guide itself. And they're basically uh, telling students to, to lobby for climate change legislation on, uh, on page eight. Uh, everyone, including young adults, can bring about change by being active, engaged citizens. They can encourage lawmakers to support policies that alleviate or lessen the impacts of climate change. Is the, D the DNR is telling students they should be calling me and telling me that I should enact policies that will fight climate change that they assume is, is happening and being caused by us? I have some real problems with that. Ott says he's concerned with what could be the DNR's ultimate purpose with the guide. Well, I can imagine a seventh grader reading this. It, it almost sounds like an indoctrination to me as far as global warming is concerned. The kids are, you know, they're citizens tomorrow, and we want them to be equipped, whether it's climate change or environmental or any other topic, to really be good citizens, to learn how to think critically, to learn how to analyze what's out there to make up their minds and to become an active part. And obviously for those of us here in the DNR, we think the environment's one important element of that. So far, the DNR has distributed 6,000 copies of the guide, but it does not collect information on which Wisconsin schools are incorporating it into their lesson plans. For the MacGyver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.